Hey folks, it's Finn. Let's talk about my art scar. It has now been two years since I had first stage radial forearm phalloplasty. I have done another vlog concerning the sensation and stuff, but I thought in this vlog I talk specifically about my arm. So with phalloplasty, there are a number of different choices as to where you can take the skin graft from and I chose the arm for a number of reasons because it gives the best sensation, the best aesthetics and so forth. Scary decision to use the arm but I'm very very pleased about how it's healed. This is two years post-op as I've said so we'll see if we can do a little spin round so you can see my arm. That's the back half of it. I have healed exceptionally well. I do tend to heal well. I am very lucky like that. But I also do take a lot of good care of myself as well. I take extra vitamins, especially vitamin C and zinc. I take a ton of it after any surgery. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I eat a vegetarian diet. I make sure I eat lots of protein. and All of those things really do help when it comes to scar healing. So does scar aftercare, specifically massage keeping it moist and using <clears throat> scar serums such as Coat. Now with this, Coat's very expensive, so I did not cover this in Coat. What I did was the same as I did with my other scar treatment with my top surgery, was to use something called Tamanu oil, which is a really lovely thick oil, which has got really good healing properties for scars. It's also very organic and natural. So I was massaging with that, same as I was with my top surgery. I did, I think, for a brief period, use some Kela Coat just on the outline scars of this, but not for very long because it is so expensive. I did find, however, that as good as the Tamanu is, it wasn't keeping this moist. Now, a graft doesn't have any sweat glands in it, so it doesn't keep itself moist and so forth, a big area like this. So you really need to moisturise it quite a lot. In fact, I often need to moisturise this about three times a day just to help it feel really kind of supple and not dry. So what I started doing was just using something like an E45 cream, a really thick cream. So what I would do, would I'd first massage with a Tamanu oil, spend like a good 15 minutes just gently massaging all around it. And then I would put some... E45 on afterwards to keep it nice and moist. Recently though, somebody introduced me to castor oil. It is fantastic. It's a really, really lovely thick oil and it keeps it moist. I don't need to use anything else on top of it. It doesn't have a smell either and a lot of people were kind of a bit off put about the Tamanu because it is quite a strong smell. I quite like it, but a lot of people don't. So I'd recommend um, trying castor oil as well. I'll put a link to information about it because it's also very good for scarring too. Um, so I have stopped using that and I really, really like it. The only thing I've done wrong with this is get it in the sun. Now, you are not supposed to put a scar in the sun for the first year. So I was very, very vigilant in the first year. I would use complete sunblock on it and then put a sleeve over it. I'm outdoors all the time, walking, camping, festivals. So when it came to a year, I wasn't as strict about using the sleeve. I was still using sunblock, but not the sleeve. And because of that, because I'm outside so often, I ended up still getting a tan. And what's happened is it's gone a slightly different colour to the rest of my arm. Now, when I'm tanned, you can't tell too much. But in the winter, when I lose my tan, the tan doesn't go off this. Mr. Christopher saw it, he was like, why is your arm a different colour? <laughs> Oops. So it seems that if you get a tan on a graft, it then doesn't lose its colour. I've used, it, used a gentle exfoliation to try and get some of it off. <laughs> but um, oops-a-daisy, I reread the guidance and it actually says two years before getting it out in the sun. So maybe that has something to do with it. But it might just be that I'm a sun bunny and I was out and it just caught the sun. 
a lot of other people have been very good and they keep it covered in the sun they always wear a sleeve I was just finding it quite difficult to wear a sleeve because it was bringing up old self-harm stuff because I used to keep all my self-harm covered and I despite telling myself logically that it wasn't self-harm because it was covered I was feeling like people were seeing my self-harm scars and then seeing my arm covered and thinking oh the poor thing's still self-harming so I didn't like wearing the sleeve um, but probably I should have done and I recommend to people that you do wear a sleeve and you definitely wear sunblock but saying that though I'm not overly concerned it's a slight different colour but overall I'm not I'm not worried at all I really am not I'm very pleased about how it looks in terms of function now I've always had quite stiff hands anyway and quite stiff clicky wrists and it's definitely got worse since having this whether that's messing with the arm and the nerves itself or whether it's just because it was out of use for such a long time it's definitely lost some function not a huge huge amount but my hand has always felt weak and it just feels weaker kind of very small fine motor stuff it's it's okay and if I worked it it would probably be better but I've definitely lost a little bit not enough again to be significant but I'm noting it I've just donated my bike to someone because I don't feel that confident about doing the brake movement or kind of leaning on the brake. I've got a back injury as well. Plus I like walking. So it's all those things rolled into one as to why I've donated my bike. But um, yeah, I just didn't feel overly secure on my bike. That's not to panic people and say you'll lose your arm. I've seen people that drive and play guitar um, have phalloplasty and then not lose that ability at all. I think it depends on what you do directly afterwards because if you have phalloplasty and then as soon as you can start using your hand properly you'll probably be fine but I didn't get on my bike straight away or drive or pick up a guitar so you know I think it's a case of you get out what you put in and I didn't probably put as much effort into hand strengthening as I could have done but it's not really concerning me it doesn't impact on my life I can't be bothered to cycle so it's okay this is obviously the only area of my lower surgery that's actually finished right now so what you see here is what you get it's just going to continue healing from here on in and it won't be messed with which of course is different with my lower surgery because that's going to be continually messed with for at least another six months to a year before i'm finished but this done and dusted and i'm very happy with how that's finished people have asked about whether i might get a tattoo at some point being that i've just had this done i'll put a link to that it's not healed yet so don't take that as finished um possibly i am thinking about maybe a little mini sleeve or something i don't know but we will see in time but regardless i'm quite happy with how it looks if you have any questions please do leave me a comment in the thing below send me a email over on the fin the invincible page i'm always happy to answer any questions my tumblr has been updated to go into far more detail including pictures of what I've talked about here and in my other lower surgery catch up video. So do check those out. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care of yourselves and I will see you soon. Bye bye.